screen is visible right yes okay okay so in today's session we will cover uh, mostly on the monitoring point so which uh, every infrastructure required the monitoring without monitoring no one can uh, even you know uh, make the infrastructure stable even if you are looking for the <coughs> monolithic way or in the general uh, personal life let's say any border monitoring <coughs> if you take any country examples so though even they have a lots of strong force or something but still they require a serv surveillance system where they can host the sensitive cameras or any uh, sensor devices where they can detect the suspicious activities on the border area <clears throat> or in the defensive mode uh, or whatever things you can consider as a general uh, army side right so they have a proper surveillance system on the border area for example even in your infrastructure in the general terms like your building for example a data center so even data center uh, data center also has the surveillance system they required monitoring system like to uh, detect any suspicious activities or any malicious things or any kind of um, uh, spamming activity like a, like that you can just consider okay uh, if you correlate to this infrastructure monitoring so <clears throat> why we need required monitoring first of all so because let's say <coughs> you are you have deployed one applications on your uh, infrastructure and you are it's a uh, very critical for example it's a e-commerce website for example similar like your mintra amazon flipkart like that and you don't have any monitoring system so what will happen if even any uh, particular uh, service down let's say checkout payment system or anything so until and unless someone inform you like your website uh, checkout page is not page is not working or your payment gateway is not working or you are any <clears throat> add to card uh, service is not working then <clears throat> you will realize yeah, yeah something is wrong with our system but <clears throat> this is not a good practice so every infrastructure has a monitoring system they might use different different tools it's depend some someone use there are lots of tools available in the market you might already aware about them so in aws if you look at this we have a cloud watch we already seen that right last time cloud watch Azure uh, exact naming I don't know, but they have every uh, cloud provider has uh, their monitoring system. I think Azure monitor or something. Uh, for the other open source, Nigeria's which we will cover today, then Grafana, then your Prometheus and ELK, Elastic Cloud Search Kibana, which they can use mon log monitoring as well. So there are different different uh, monitoring system. I think Relic monitor is also there. Let me check. So these are the major one. You can see App Dynamics, Data Talk, New Relic, Dynatrace. Has Zabbix also there? Then there there are there might be some paid one as well. So Nagios has a two things. One is a community edition core, which is considered as a Nagios core. Another one is a Nagios XI, which is a paid version. Then you can see the other one as well. So there are lots of number of tools available in the market. Splunk, Logic Monitor, Network Monitor applications like that, Op Manager. <clears throat> so we don't need to learn each and every monitoring tools because if, we, if I uh, talk to one honestly on the infrastructure side, if you are working on the uh, already stable organization then you don't need to install any monitoring tool there you will get ready-made uh, platform there you just have to create the dashboards any log source uh, data source there or any uh, monitoring part basically the user interface dashboards log monitors uh, by you adding the graphs and the data source so you might get very rare chance to install the any monitoring tools from the scratch until and unless if you get the chance uh, opportunity to work on the project from the scratch where you need to define complete architecture on the AWS or Azure or the Kubernetes then 
add the monitoring infrastructure there like that until and unless otherwise you will get the ready-made platform there where you can add the top up uh, dashboards log monitoring like that but installation part is very rare case as i said but still you should have a knowledge about how to install the particular uh, monitoring tool like let's say nike use which we, we will today cover then your grafana prometheus like that <coughs> So if you look at the Nagios architecture, Nagios architecture. So let's say this is the Nagios main server. Okay. Then we can add number of devices here. Like your this is the Linux host. This is your Windows host. <laughs> For Mac, I don't have expert. I don't I never add Mac one because we do <coughs> we will not get opportunity there. <coughs> but other devices also you can add uh, more for the monitoring like your switches, your routers like that to monitor the ping packet or any something like that, you know, the device is up or not, for example. And Nagios you can install on your VMware, VMware box on AWS, which is EC2. Even you can install on your local as well. If you are using any local Nagio system or oh, sorry, Linux based operating system or something. So on the Nagios, we will install the uh, Nagios uh, main uh, package. And let's say for the if you want to add monitoring for the Linux servers. So there is a package like NRPE, which is the plugins for the Nagios monitoring, <coughs> which will continuously send the data to Nagios servers to track the uh, resource changes. Let's say your CPU utilization, your memory utilization, your disk space utilization, uh, your other service port. You can uh, ever monitor your service URL as well. Service URL, service ports like that. Database replications, everything. So in current organization, we are not using Nagios, but uh, sorry, current organization means current project. But uh, in earlier, which where I work, where I extensively work on this Nagios part, which where we completely monitoring and uh, set up the alerts as well, email alerts, Nagios also support the SMS alerts. You can set if you have any SMS service in your in your organization, you can use that SMS service as well to get the alerts on the mobile number. Okay, so normally people use pager duty. Anyone heard about this? Pager duty tool. Big organization use this pager duty tool to get the alerts on the mobile. Or the if you are aware about the concept like on call system, even after business hours end, some people will come to the online. Like if he get the alerts through the page duty on his mobile number, he should have available on that to fix that error. Basically, this is the page duty tool which people use for the alerting point of view on the mobile number as well. And for the Windows, this is for the Linux, which we need to install the plugin NRP. Okay. And for the Windows, we have a two service. One is NS client. It's a free one. You know, you don't need to pay any additional version NS client. And another one is. Which I just close. I will come to that. Does the another one is like SNMP something, but we, we, I, I will show you today is the NS client, which is the very pretty simple. Okay. So till now, anyone has any doubts? No. Okay. The Nagios official website is I can show you. This is Nagios.org. Sometimes some uh, organization use paid one, which the because the paid one has more feature. Yeah, you, like uh, you don't need to add. Uh, I will show you uh, going forward. So how we can do this on the core level and how we can do this on the XI level. XI level license I don't have. Okay, but I will just give you the brief description. You can see they're the clients which use Nagios as a monitoring part. These are the clients. 
if i go to this products so they have a nagios core nagios configuration tool nagios front end so <coughs> by default if you consider as a nagios core here we have a completely command line access where you need to define the configuration files through the command line but if you purchase or customize yourself by making taking the help from the developers your front end developers they also can design the nagios the way like you don't need to add the any particular server through the command line command lines means what this kind of configuration files for example okay you will get the complete user interface where you can add, just click on the graphical interface add the number of uh, servers you can put the name services that just <laughs> click the services name like you want to monitor this uh, disk space http packet your any other customized services or any mysql database port number like that so you <clears throat> that you can design yourself if you have a uh, good uh, front end developer there that is additional part but uh, nagios xi which is the paid version he supports by default that feature where people can use but it's a license cost so most of the company the small scale industry will not afford so they go with this nagios core which is the open source you can just uh, explore this <coughs> there is official website nagios core uh, sorry nagios.org you can see this nagios exercise uh, license one and these are the other products as well they have they also have a separate nagios log servers network analyzer let's say you have a network devices you can also monitor like this graph or, or something okay so they have a uh, different different uh, plugins themes which uh, if you remember <coughs> so last time i shared two images right <coughs> let me quickly go through okay it's not opening this is the by default ui from the nagios okay <clears throat> you can see it's a look as pretty simple but if you want to make more <clears throat> compatible and the ui interface you can see this is the latest one which i add the theme i will show you how we can how we can download the latest themes which you like and you can just host on the nagios server which uh, gives a pretty low, uh, simple looks and a very uh, you know interactive in interface you can see the lots of options there and the ui it's very you know easy to use so now coming to the installation part let me log into this server this is the nagios server i designed and these are the two clients which i want to show you like one for the linux and one for the windows let me copy the ip address this is the nagios server which i already added here 250 156 okay let me connect So I have prepared all the step by step uh, documents here for the Nagios installation. So you will not get any, get any major troubles when you try to install. Okay, the requirement is which I uh, tested this. So you should have a uh, Ubuntu latest version 22 or something. And then instance type, you can go either T2 micro T3 micro. It's as you are using a free tier account. Okay, and uh, you should have a SSH root access full permission because you are going to install the packages there <clears throat> and lots of configuration let, <clears throat> let me confirm the one, version once it's ubuntu 24 so definitely you can use that as well what the minimum version 04 okay 24 04 okay <clears throat> so i have added the, some reference documentation here as well but whatever the things I have tested here, I will I, I have added the uh, every command here. You can just go step by step. Here, Nagios require two things. One is your Apache server 
I mean web server. It can be you can install the nginx for uh, Apache HTTP packet. Okay, so I added here Apache two package, which is the HTTPD. And there are some customized plugins from the Nagios which we need to install. This is the Nagios version 4.46. Okay, if you want to install any custom versions, lower or uh, latest one, so you can definitely mention here. So I'm I'm almost trying. If I look at this latest version. It's almost you can consider you know uh, 4.53 something if you go to that latest release version. This recently they just launched 11 June. So here which we are using 4.46. Okay, so it's up to you. You can install either latest version or any particular version. So I tried with this version. So first you have to install this. Uh, dependencies here like Apache 2, PHP, OpenSSL, Perl, which is the front end required libraries basically, as simple as. Then you need to uh, restart the Apache service. Apache service last time on the web server, we have seen that. Font is visible, right? Yes, sir. System CTL status Apache 2. You can see the service status like this. But here, if if you don't get that uh, automatically restarted, you can just add. I'm just adding the command here. Start Apache 2. Okay. If you let's say your services stop, you can just uh, start by this command Apache start. Then go to this. Either you can go to the CD temporary folder or you can create your customized like any data folder or something. It's up to you. We require just to download this package, Nagios package. Then you need to create the Nagios user, then create the Nagios group and add that user Nagios user to that group, okay, which is the required to run the Nagios process. So once we downloaded this tar.gz in the Linux command, we need to extract that by using the tar.xvz xzf command, okay. So basically, I will show you here. I am in the temp or what I can do is so I am creating here <coughs> mkdr data folder for example so if I go to that data folder <coughs> I don't have any package now so what I can do is I can just simply download this package and for download you can use the wget command okay simply if you get any issues here, like you are able to see now 200. Okay, that means that package is available on that URL. Okay, if you get like 404 or something. So what you can do is in this in that case, you can just visit link till here Nagios score and then you can just check the religious if, it, if any URL changes there or any naming convention like that. So you can just uh, click on that and you can just add here. Okay. Then this I have already added, so I am not going, not, not going to execute that adding the users. So now I can extract those this package which I downloaded. Okay. You can see this tar.gz. So I can use this Linux command to extract. You can see it's extracted here, Nagios. So you can see there are lots of all the dependencies, packages, configuration files available in the this uh, package here okay so you can uh, this is a completely not similar like am command so you have to compile this everyone so by using this command dot configure with the http configuration so we need to enable that nagios configuration here so which i already done you can see the nagios configuration here this one okay once that is done we need to compile the Nagios core code here by using the make all command. Then we need to install the binaries in some scripts and sample configuration files, which is required for the Nagios monitoring. Okay, I will come to that uh, Nagios document route where I can show you the all the configurations. Okay, but you need to in install this, uh, execute this command one by one. You will not get any issues until and unless if you get any issues like GCC is not found or something, then you have to install that package. GC, I mean install uh, sorry apt install gcc something okay 
if you get that issues but i, I have not faced that issue during this configuration so it's uh, you can consider as a, uh, working fine then this is the basic command like you again need to restart the restart the apache service okay then this is one more additional plugins required for the nagios which which has the nagios plugins plugins means what so let's say you are monitoring any memory utilization, any display utilization. So every utilization, uh, sorry, matrix monitoring required plugins. Okay, so I will show you that as well. So that uh, it's supported by this Nagios plugins, where you will get the plugins here. So let me download quickly Nagios plugins is there. Okay, this one. So let me extract that tar hyphen x with zf. And that file name so you can see it's extracted and you can see here nagios plugins if i go to this plugins so these are the uh, plugins for the httpd ldap mrtg mysql ntp server your postgres ping like that blah okay there are a number of tools plugins supported by default so after that you need to install this um, further configuration with this command okay once again you need to compile the source code for the nagus plugins and this is the command where you can verify nagus configuration is configured properly or not okay this question might you you might get in the interview panel how to verify let's say you are working on the any production nagios servers and you have made some changes in the configuration files or you have you have added the one more servers in the monitoring system and before restarting the nagios service you need to verify that nagios configuration is valid or not so basically syntax checks so in apache how you can check the apache configuration file is properly configured or not anyone Let's say your interview panel ask you the questions. I have Apache web servers. I have modified some changes in the configuration files. So there are so I, before restarting the Apache service, I want to make sure that configuration is valid and added properly with the syntax and all. So how we can verify that syntax is properly configured or not in the Apache? Anyone idea on this? No. So there is a HTTP T hyphen something command. So I am I can I'm just getting that exact command. Because you if you are working on the production system, right? So you cannot directly restart any service like Apache service or uh, Nginx service. So first you should verify that configuration is valid or not. So as I said, it's a HTTP hyphen T. It will check the syntax. So let me try that. it's not installed now it's apache here yeah, you can see here if i use uh, i'm using apache 2 because i installed the apache 2 on this ubuntu server let's say you are using the uh, send to us something or amazon linux machine so in that case you can use a uh, httpd hyphen t to check the syntax for the configuration so you can see this is the syntax error giving on the line number 80 for this apache 2 conf file okay so like this you can just validate and resolve that issues this is just additional context which uh, you can use so same thing for uh, Nagios. You can use this command to verify that all the configuration should be fine before restarting the Nagios service. So what will happen if you have any mistakes in the configuration files and you restarted the Nagios service? So uh, so your entire URL, which this one, right? It will stop working because something problem with your configuration files. So you will you cannot see this kind of UI dashboards. So that is the precautions you need to verify that. So how you can uh, go to the file the, once Nagios installation complete. For example. Your document default uh, document root will be. USR local Nagios. This is the default document root for the Nagios. 
Okay, so inside that you can find all the configuration related to Nikeos. That's it. Bin file, your etc, your include, libxc, as been where share. Okay, so I will come to that. So once you install the Nagios package, Nagios plugins, right? So now what about the username password for the Nagios? So this is the HTTP configurations you might seen somewhere where we can define the user interface password, okay? By using the stpasswd command. So where here you need to define the username. What kind of username you want to define for the Nagios user interface? I just mentioned Nagios admin. You can go with your any particular generic name like admin or something you can it's up to you but here you need to define the username for the user interface and after that you will get the password prompt where you can provide the password prompt okay so for now i just use the simple password so no issues but if you are working for the production system you should uh, configure the encrypted proper uh, password like lindy with the combinations of numeric values symbolic number like that okay so how you can access the Nagios URL, your server IP and forward slash Nagios. Okay, so let me give you the overview. Let's say I already log in here, but let me try in the cognito mode. This is the URL. So here, let's say you have installed on your local machine. So whatever the IP address you have, that IP address should be here and then slash Nagios. Okay. He will ask the username and password you can see. So which I already saved here. The username is Nagios and password which I just shown. So once that is correct, you can just sign in. So you will see like this dashboard. Any doubts till now? No. Definitely you required hands on practicals if you not work on before. Okay. But as I said, I have given the complete clean notes here. You can easily follow that. You will not get any issues. OK. And now <clears throat> after this change is done. I will let me add this in last okay it's not required now oh well, let me keep as it is this is just additional context where you can define the email address so let's say we have configured the nagios servers okay and now we want to define the alerts the which person should go the alerts so you can define in the configuration files as i said usr local nagios will be the default document root inside that you have this etc folder uh, directory structure where you will get this contact.cfg. So, as we said, the YAML file should YAML extension like YML or something. So, same thing for the Nagios configuration, it should have a CFG configuration uh, extension. Otherwise, that file will not be valid for the Nagios. You can see the configuration.cfg.cfg, .cfg, right? This is the, your ESTD password users files where you have the user username details. This is the Nagios username and password is an encrypted format. Okay, so it's uh, stored here. If you want to create one more additional users, you can definitely go and just add that by using this command. So instead of that, you can add your username. Okay. So now this is the command where you can validate the configuration files. So it's basically pretty simple like bin file. You are verifying from the Nagios bin plugins with these your configuration files. Now one more configurations we required. So what we will happen in our uh, real time server which we follow last time. So inside the objects folder you can definitely put your other servers details like let's say you want to add more servers your multiple Linux servers multiple Windows servers. You can add here, no issues, but it will be uh, unnecessary uh, mix with this Nagios configuration files. These are the Nagios configuration files, command.cfg, contact.cfg like that. And we don't want to mix our server configuration file with this Nagios configuration file. So what we have done to avoid that, 
we have created the separate folder structure here servers it's up to you you can give the name servers or any uh, also you can categorize that like linux server windows server like that also you can categorize in the production system so here inside the servers i have added the two server one is for ubuntu and one is for the uh, windows base okay so now i will show you that configuration files but before that i will show you that so these are the just simple uh, command i just verified here if you get any issues so how you can restart the nagios service it's a uh, same one system ctl status nagios this is just to check the nagios service status if you want to restart it you can you can just add status instead of status you can just add restart stop or something like that let me add here i, I, I already added here no issues this is just to check the status okay so as i said this is for the new additional theme which is the arena style okay if i search arena nagios theme sometimes some company will use it by default themes it's up to you up to them but uh, this arena style uh, we like last time so we you uh, try that because it gives a better user interface you can see so like this so we just uh, install that so how you can install this any additional uh, plugins uh, sorry themes if you like so you can simply go to, you should go to this uh, particular location as i said let me come back here okay so you should always go into this usr local nagios okay this is the main uh, document route in that you can go to this share folder okay this one don't add like this share you can just try share one okay so here here by default you will find the by default uh, plugin there uh, theme which i shown earlier okay so what you can do is for that you can just simply take a fresh backup of this share folder on your any particular location like root or any backup something okay then go into the share folder and remove the all the content like this okay because this inside the share folder you will see only configuration for the your ui theme okay like this this one so you can delete existing files completely inside the share folder then you can just simply download that this is the url of the arena theme style okay you can just simply download it then uh, you, it will download by default download folder so you need to make it move to zip okay once you move that file to zip then you have to unzip it by using this command okay then you can copy all the content from which downloaded this uh, arena style inside the share folder okay so you after that you will look like this this all the package will be stored here files files and folders once that is done you have you have to restart the nagios server and apache server for the ui ui changes okay so you will get like this but let me unpin it so i can show you can you see uh, see here header it's uh, showing nagios but by default it will not be a nagios it will be something like uh, some different name okay the bigger one and here you are you able to see this devops with namdev this is the additional logo here basically i have just pasted here so by default it will be a edura or something uh, default logo which i sh shared last time so that will be a not a useful because if you let's say you are working for some company so every company has their logo system right so you can just download that file uh, image and you can we can put it here as a logo file how we can put that i will show you that as well but just to change the headers like nagios 
so you have to edit the index.html file here <coughs> i will show you here can you see here the title so here it, it will be a default value but you have you can change it like whatever the header you want to pass i give as a top line okay so i just mentioned here uh, nagios but let's say you have organization abc so you can give the abc nagios or nagios production nagios dev like that or any nagios project name something okay so same changes you need to give the for other as well like index.php menu.html sidebar.html top.html okay then it will be reflected properly let's say index.php you can see here title okay you can just simply modify it now coming to that logo okay this one so by default it's an endura or something but we can uh, download your logo uh, whatever the company for you are working so you can download and that file name should be design png okay i can show you here somewhere i copied let me check So don't don't worry i have given the, all the steps here so you can easily follow that so under images you, you need to go into the interface okay so here we have this folder interface we can just cd into that and here you will get that design by dot png okay so whatever the logo you want to keep here here you need to rename that image name to like this design by dot png then it will work if i move it for example design by so let's see what will happen and let me restart the service okay system ctl restart nagi os and system ctl restart apache 2 okay so now let me refresh it okay the, that page might be cached so let me see so this logo has been removed here so let me revert back Okay, you can see the default logo designed by Edura Doll Arena something. Okay, so this is the default logo you will see there, but which I showed the like I have uh, deployed there my own logo. So you can just move it now. This is the default one, so I don't want to use that. Okay, and let me move my original logo to here. Okay, design by dot png. This file name should be there. Okay, now let me restart the service. Let me check.
right so this this way you can just change the logo and header you can see the header name here this is just to additional ui benefits and by default nagios refresh the page ui itself by every 90 seconds okay we can definitely change this from the configuration files but by default it's, it will be a 90 every 90 seconds it will refresh the ui and login as a nagios admin whichever the users you are using you can just see here okay okay and you can also see the nagios core version it is 4.4.6 okay now let me show you that configuration file of the how you can add the servers okay so let me show you for the windows server let me click on that first i need to get the password as well password i stored yesterday let's see if it login properly i think ip address change okay it's connecting so normally windows server takes some time because uh, it's a heavy process you know so once you log into your windows machine for example if you if you are uh, trying to add windows server in the nagios monitoring first you have to download the One minute, he is not showing me the taskbar. You have to download the NS client package here. Okay, this is the website source forge from where you can download. So I have given this URL in the here document as well so this is one troubleshooting where i get the issues where i will show you from how from, from where we get this issue and how to fix that okay i have added the solution as well here so don't worry so now this is for the reference link i have provided for the linux host how you can add the ubuntu as a in the monitoring and for the windows as well okay so if i click on this link i think it's already here hmm. so here as well you will get that reference link from where you can download the this ns client package okay So you, you need to first go to that windows machine and visit the that link and you can simply just click on this download button to download this ns client package okay once download complete you will see like this okay not here just go to the download folder on your local machine uh, that windows machine okay and you can just simply Click on the click on that. It will be the wizard like this installation wizard. As we know for the Windows, it's pretty simple. So I have already installed. So that is the reason he is showing like you want to change or rename or something. So let me if I try to change it. So let's see what will happen. So here he will ask allowed host. Okay. So here just don't confuse which IP sh should you need to enter. This is as pretty simple here as well. He is mentioned. This is the server of the Nagios server IP address. Nagios server IP address basically. 
So wherever you are Nagio server, so you need to just copy the that's Nagio server IP address. Okay. So for that you can just go to your Nagio server and get the either public or private IP address. Okay. But if you are working everything within the same VPC, so I would suggest go with the private private IP address for the better communication and within a secure way. Okay. So you don't need to send your Nagio server traffic to public network. You can just simply use Nagio server IP, private IP address. Okay. So that, so that connectivity you have to manage through the security group. I will show you that as well, how we can open the port in the security group. So here you should add the Nagio server IP address. Okay. And then just enable this check which more modules to load. You first four uh, modules you can just enable. This is just a monitoring package basically uh, for the Windows. Check NT, check NRP like that. And just simply click on next and just you need to finish it. Okay. Just once installation done. This is done from the Windows side now. So in Linux server now on the Nagio server, what we need to add? Go to the USR local Nagio S. Okay. ETC. This ETC, okay, not this ETC. Otherwise, you will get confused where you have landed. Okay. So that's the reason. Always make sure you should have in the USR local Nagio S. Okay. LS here you should go to this etc folder. Okay, not the root slash etc. Just remember that slash etc and I have created as I shown I have created separate server folder here in your organization. You can also add the separate separate folders for that like uh, Ubuntu uh, sorry for Linux base Windows base database like that. You can just categorize the like you said lots of features. Okay. So let me go to this servers folder here. I added the two configuration file one for the Ubuntu second for the Windows base. Okay, so configuration extension should be CFG. Otherwise it will be a create a problem. So if I go to. This file just to check. So this is the format basically where how you can provide the host definition for the Nagus monitoring. Okay, this is the defined host Linux server. If it's a Windows server, then you can add the like the Windows servers. Then host name is up to you. Uh, whatever you can use. This is for the identification basically. So let's say in your project we you have a multiple Linux servers. So in that in that case, you can just give the name uh, like that for any particular servers. Let's say you are adding the database server in the Nagus monitoring. So in that case, you can give the name like MySQL DB uh, project name or IP address. Hyper. Okay, not a forward slash. So just it is just for the identification and then IP address should be not the Nagio server. Okay, just make a note of this. This IP address will be your actual monitoring server, which your database server, your Windows server or Linux servers. The which target you want to add here basically. Okay, for the monitoring. Everywhere uh, in the general worldwide, this configuration will be same. Okay. So you don't need to confuse on over here. This is a generic service which uh, at the format you don't need to change this. Okay, otherwise you will get a problem with the negative service. Only you can add here. This host name. Like whatever the host name you have provided here. Every everywhere should be same. Uh, in this service configuration like host name. So whatever you have given here. Ubuntu host. You should give the same name here. Okay, either host name. For every service, this service is for the check the users. How many users log in on that servers on your Linux server, for example? Then how much current load? Okay, this plugins will automatically check the load format. This is your total process. Normally, we use top command right to check the process. So this is a check underscore local process plugins. This is the SSH basically SSH service running or not. Uh, I mean. SSH port 22 working or not. Okay. Then your HTTP package. This is the check at HTTP. If you want to add database server, for example, so you can just add that check MySQL or something or MSQL MongoDB like that. And you have to define the port number. This is for the Ubuntu I shown, but for Windows, let me show. Okay, for Windows, I have given on the default configuration file where 
I will show you that. So Windows configuration I have stored here under objects while the testing. But you can add that there as well. Okay, I just add here during the practice. So I forgot to move, move there basically. Sorry. For the Windows configuration look like something different. So this should be same like uh, your uh, as I said Linux server. This is for the Windows server, so you can mention like this Windows server. OK. And this is the host name which you can it's optional. You can give the whatever name you want to give. You can see the description as well. OK. So you can give the like uh, Windows server or IS server and then hyphen IP address of that server like that just for the identification. Then IP address of that host which you are adding in the monitoring. OK. It might be your IS server, any database servers like that, or web servers. So that you have to give the IP address here. Target server basically, which we have seen here, right? Diagram. So let's say you are adding the Linux server. So if this Linux server IP address, you should add, add in the that configuration file. Let's say you are going to add the Windows server, that Windows server private IP address should be added in the that configuration file. So these are the that the IP address of that particular host. And configuration little bit different for the Windows machine because the it's a different OS platform where you can use the check and take which we have installed the NS client here. This will be check the uptime here. Okay. Where it uptime then your C drive space. Okay. So this is the check the because Linux we have a root partition. So in the Windows we have a multiple partition like C drive D drive E drive like that. So we need to give this format. Here just remember one thing you can just modify the Windows host a uh, host name here. So whatever we have given in the top. Uh, here. We have to replace the same value here as a host name. OK, if you give the different different so that configuration will might be uh, issues here. OK, just host name should be uh, same for all the services. Whatever the service you have defined. And make sure let's say you have a uh, only single server drive like C drive. So you can just pass like this. Let's say you have one more drive like D drive. So just change here D drive and this letter as well. OK, this one. So whatever the uh, drive letter you have, let's say this Windows server have a single drive letter. This is a simple C drive letter. Let's say if you add one more drive, it might come to D, E, F, G like that. Okay. So whatever the drive letter is there, you have to pass here. D and D. Okay. This is the warning and critical format in the Linux. One minute. Okay. So in CloudWatch, we don't have a concept like that warning or critical, but in Nagios, we have a concept that critical and warning. OK, so what is meaning by that? So let's say you have keep the warning as a 80 percent or 60 percent something. That means so your disk space might be at 60 percent full. I mean utilization. So in that case, you will get the early stage alerts that's in the uh, warning mode. So how will it will look like this? I think uh, I don't have that kind of here. So instead of green, you will see, let's say for Windows host, instead of green, you will see in the yellow format. OK, if I show you then one image. Nagios warning. Critical. Let me show you the image. Yeah, here.
so like this basically uh, if you get that strip utilization uh, sorry this utilization uh, uh, reach up to 60 percent utilization then you will see the alerts like this uh, l in yellow, yellow color as simple as okay green means everything is working well like a uh, okay status yellow means it's in a warning state okay so why we have this concept like warning and critical so so after you get the uh, warning alerts at least we will get a sufficient time to resolve that so let's say this place is getting full so at least you can as an admin or engineer we can just log into that particular servers then checking the dispatch utilization logs and we can take the action appropriately so we can remove the unnecessary logs or any files something okay okay before going into the critical mode and if you get the alerts like critical so anyhow we have to take the action sometimes for the warning state you can just ignore or uh, postpone like your activities like let's say you today you get the warning alerts so at least you have a, you will get the sufficient time to resolve that issue like a uh, if dispatch get that utilization full 60 percent 70 percent so you will get sufficient time period but if that service convert into the critical mode so, so in that case you have to resolve that anyhow otherwise your system will system will be down or impacted so that is the feature basically okay so that is the reason here you have to give the according to modification uh, values by dis dis discussion with your either uh, tech architect or something okay within your team even you can also define yourself like 75% uh, or something you can give as a warning mode and 90% means your critical mode okay so same thing for the memory utilization you can see here warning and critical sign okay so whatever you want to define 70% or something for the warning 90% for the criti critical mode okay so this is just a sample configuration files once everything is done for example then you have to first verify this Nagios configuration uh, file before restarting the Nagios serv service. USR local Nagios bin and the Nagios configuration file hyphen V USR local Nagios slash etc and your Nagios configuration file. Okay. If you have any issues, you will get the alerts. So here you will get the dashboard basically uh, how many servers host we have added how many host groups, how many services you have added basically as simple as if everything is clear like zero zero that means you are safe to restart your Nagios service. Okay. And once that is done, you can see like this. If you go to the host details, you will see only the host details, how many hosts you have added. As you can see, this is the local host means your Nagios server host I have added here uh, where I install the Nagios plugin uh, packages, Nagios servers. Ubuntu host, which we added the additional Linux server, this one, Nagios client, and Windows means this one, additional client, okay? This one. So if I click on particular, let's say if I click on particular things, particular host, I will see like this. I will see here the IP address of that particular server, which we have added in the configuration file, okay? And we can see the host status, it's up. Up, basically uptime you can see for the one day nine hours which i practiced yesterday and ping status is okay okay so just remember one thing as we learn in the aws cloud one minute Okay, so as we have learned in the AWS cloud, so AWS cloud security groups by default, no one allows, right? By default ping packet or any particular port number, it will not open by default, right? So in that case, we need to open that particularly, particularly. So now, if you understand the networking part here, so what port number we need to open, right? So that also important factor here, let's say, I know this is one one session understanding Nagios will be a tricky, but it's not a complex one. So installation part, I have pretty give the sim simple straightforward uh, steps. You can easily look at that. This is the Nagios server. 
okay and this is our client client this is the client server architecture it might be your linux or windows uh, i can draw here separate windows okay now we have an Agio server which has a security group right we have a client we have a security group for linux and windows now we have ip address of this Nagio server okay so how net networking will work here take this ip address of this Nagio server okay because Nagio server will send the request to get the data like research utilization data where we are installed the Nagio plugin it will uh, it will fetch the data like your uh, it will continuously check your uh, display utilization memory utilization uptime ping packet like that okay so in that case in the client side security group inbound rule okay inbound rule for the linux we need to add the nrp packet which is work on the 5666 okay so in client side in inbound rules we need to add this custom port 5666 for linux base nr for the nrp packet okay but for the windows we have a different thing as we install the ns client okay ns client service work on the 12489 packet number just remember these things okay so uh, i will show you that how we can open that but uh, uh, is that clear now for the linux we should open this 5666 port number for windows we should add the 12489 packet number as a port number let me show you that practically or i can add here because i have not i think i have not added here networking part okay open below ports for linux and windows host okay for linux open port 5666 for nrp okay and icmp all ipv4 i will show you this, this one as well okay why we required icmp packet because for the ping service we don't have any dedicated port number if you remember of the linux practices okay so ping service don't have any port number that's why we need to open the icmp incoming protocol okay that service doesn't have any port number if someone asks as an entry questions for windows we need to add the open port ns client 12489 and icmp packet okay so now coming to this security group let's say so here i have not created the separate security group for the linux client and windows client just make a note of this but you can consider this will be a separate security group for the linux client separate security group for the windows client okay so now coming to the security group for the linux client come to the security open the security group on the right click here inside the inbound rule okay click on the inbound rule here you can see i have opened the icmp packet for the ping service because nagio servers continuously ping your uh, target uh, server target host which you have added in the nagios monitoring why he uh, ping continuously because he continuously check the, your services status your dispatch dispatch utilization your load your uh, whatever the service you have added in the configuration files your let's say mysql port number http port number to check the uptimes so like that for connectivity he required the icmp packet and we know icmp packet don't have any port number so that is the reason icmp means your ping ping service ping service doesn't have port number so you should add this 
protocol here instead of giving the custom port you should select this all icmp ipv4 okay because we are using based on the ipv4 for now so that's why and for which ip address not the globally okay if you make it mistake like anywhere you will be in, in big trouble because what will happen when spamming active activity or spammer try to hit your servers they continuously trace your ping service packet so if, if you open here anywhere so that will be a major compliance issue so always make sure that packet should be open for the nagio server ip address okay not the entire world only open for the nagio server ip address here i have already mentioned here as well this should be for the nagio server okay once that is done you can see the one more packet i have open here 566 okay this is for the linux based nrp package which it will work on that okay and for windows because i have same security group i am using for the windows as well so i have opened that port as well here custom port 12489 which is required for the your uh, windows servers so just for the practical i have just added anywhere but make just make a note this should be a open for only nagio server ip address not the entire world okay any doubts in this port open any confusion uh, this uh, we, we add include only uh, our nagoji's host or customer part uh, you mean security group uh, yes so this security group will be uh, should be your actual uh, target host let's say you are adding the linux as a host in the nagos so uh, click on that your uh, host which is the client host you can consider your linux machine open that security group and add inbound rule for the nagio server ip address so basically you are giving the permission to nagio server to uh, continuously ping on this port number 12489 and icmp that's it so these changes you should have done on the client host machine which you are uh, it might be linux machine or windows machine not a nagio server okay okay so once this is done you can simply save it then it that connectivity will be show like this like here he will continue to check your packet and other details you can see check type status active like that now if i want to check how many services i have added on this host machine this machine <coughs> i can simply go to this view status detail for this host so i can see <coughs> so you can see automatically he will fetch the data from check load your current users two users are logins okay http packet http packet is okay your root partition you can see the free day space here so the benefit is like you don't need to go any particular servers and check the this space utilization like how many it's a full let's say you have a 50 servers 100 servers so is it possible to check every server daily basis more manually no right so that is the reason we required monitoring system so you can see SSH package is getting connection timeout, okay? Because this might be SSH service is not running on this Ubuntu host, which I added. So let's, we can just simply go and check, okay? So that is the reason he is showing connection timeout, socket timeout. So I can simply go to this client machine. This one, okay, client one. I'm not. I am not logging to Nagio server. Okay, just remember that. I'm logging onto the client machine, and let me open that single server. Okay, this one I have added yesterday. IP address will be two one six fifty eight. Okay, two one six fifty eight. Right. Let me open that and let me check the status. Net stat hyphen T L U P N. Acha not install. Anyways, install. Anyone remember why we use net stat command? No. We learn in the Linux session. We use net stat net stat net stat command to check the listen service port number.
rape ssh okay not rape or i can check system ctl status open ssh We can do one more thing. Let me log into this Nagio server now and from there I want to check the connectivity. Okay. Log into 250 156 which is the Nagio server. 50. Nagio server. 250 156. Okay. And let me. Try to telnet. Okay, we use telnet command to check the particular service port number. Okay, so from Nagio server, I am trying to check SSH port number 22 on the client host, which is the Linux host. So he is not able to connect. So first thing what we can do is check the security group. Okay, on the client side, which is the Linux Nagios client, open the security group in the separate tab which we already open here okay go to inbound rules and let me check ssh port number okay i have not opened ssh permission for the nagio server ip address so what i can do is add new rule ssh okay add the nagio server ip address here nagio server private ip address okay because i have everything configured within the same vpc so i don't need to use public ip address here for the nagio setup you can use everything within a private ip address same vpc okay so basically i am opening the ssh port permission for the nagios ip on the this client machine as simple as okay so here add the nagio server private ip address give the 30 say for the single ip address and you can add the description here nagios ip right and just save it so now what Hello. we can do is yes but i have one question for this uh, mm -hmm. if, if we have 100 servers so how can we add every server ssh <coughs> for the private ip if you have multiple servers yes so that feature might be in the Nagios paid version XI to add the multiple hundred thousand servers at one go. Okay, they have they might have a CSV supported for files or something. So in that case, you can use. But whatever we use in the as a core version, we don't see that feature um, uh, feature available. There might be an additional supporter if you have any different skill set. You can just try with that. But we have to uh, open this uh, every single configuration file. So if you want if you want to add multiple servers, definitely there might be any additional features will be there. We never tried that, but uh, you can just search on for the Nagios XI if they provide that feature. Okay. Because XI has a uh, lots of uh, additional features. So that is the reason big organization sometimes use that uh, paid version. So Nagios client. Now what I can do is I can just copy this private IP address and from the Nagio server I can do telnet. Okay, telnet private IP address and port number 22. So now I'm able to connect because the uh, issue was we have not opened the SSH port number. Okay, so now if I go to this Nagio server, so we know that Nagio will uh, refresh every 90 seconds, uh, sorry 90 seconds. Now, if you want to quickly check is that working or not, so how we can do that? Just click on that service. Here we have a reschedule option. Reschedule the next check at this service. So what will happen? We can ch check this on the immediate manner. We will we can try in different two three times. So then it will check. Otherwise, we need to wait a couple of seconds. See. 
if you need immediate results, you can just reschedule this manually. Otherwise, you have to wait a couple of seconds here. Okay, it will automatically check by the Nagios. So you can see the now Nagios, uh, sorry, SSH packet is working fine. So now if something goes wrong with your target machine. Okay, so let's say this is our client machine, right? We have running here system CTL status Nginx. Here we have running the Nginx and here we have added the HTTP packet. Okay, so we know uh, Nginx is working on the 80 port number, right? So let's say I will stop it. Stop Nginx. Okay, so what will happen? Either we can wait 60 90 seconds or we can just immediately refresh it by just clicking on the reschedule. So now it will give the er error basically. See the connect to the address this which our target machine client machine 8.250 right 8.250 205 its connection refuse means something goes wrong with your target machine. Uh, let's say your uh, Apache service working stop or any issues with there, right? Or because of the configuration files that service goes down or application down. So you will get the immediate alert there on the Nagios. If I start now Nagios service, so let's see. So you will see like this. As of now, we have not configured any working email alert. So that's why we are not we are not getting the alert email alerts. Okay. Otherwise, you will get the immediate uh, alerts on your inbox. Okay. If you have configured the SMS as well, that as well you can uh, configure. So you will get SMS alerts immediately on your mobile number. So if I forcefully check now, so one error mentioned here, like now I am able to successfully make it done. Okay. But uh, Initially, I mentioned here, right? So this one could not open command where USR local Nagios where command Nagios dot command for update. If you get this error during your practice, so for that you have to provide the solution. So basically, it's a permission related issues. You need to add this CHO Nagios user and group for this command. Okay, then it will work. So I have faced that issue during this reschedule checks. So you can resolve that. See. It's green now. If you go to the host details, you will see the host details. If you go to the service details, you will see the service in details. So this is the multiple option there. Also, you can add the category wise uh, server here, you know. A group basically. So let's say if someone asks you like how many servers you have in the Linux servers, how many servers is it to install for the Windows server? So you can add this category wise. Okay. So there are other number of uh, available options here. Event log. So whatever uh, logs it will be generated here. You, you can see here event log. You can see this service down, right? Yeah, 80, 80 number, port number 80 refuse, right? So we can just check the timeline here. 941. Then when it recovered back, 942 okay even you will get the alert as well uh, if recovered or failure so you will get that properly this is just the monitoring part so if you need graph like you know uh, grafana we have a graph right so if you want to check the cpu utilization so we will get the proper graph there and even if you use CloudWatch as well, you will see the graph for any particular utilization or service like this, right? So same thing, Nagios by default don't provide the like Nagios log gra la graph. You have to install the additional package there. Nagios graph something. Nagios graph. This is the additional package which you have to which you need to install. Then you will see the that graph like this but by default it's not uh, supported you have to install this additional package nagios graph 
then you will see for particular service like this graph. And for the Linux and Windows steps, it's a very pretty simple how you can add that. So I have given this reference link where you can easily follow that. During the practicals, uh, if you get any issues, let me know so I can just we can connect tomorrow and we will resolve that if you do practice today for this monitoring. So this is the very pretty simple blocks. So you can just refer this. Any doubts, concern, or somewhere not getting the point? It's a completely command line where you need to define the files, files, and other stuffs. Okay. Once you install the Nagios, you can just simply go to this default document root, USR local Nagios. Yes, sir. Local. Achha, I'm not on the Nagios server. This is a client machine. If I go to the Nagios client, uh, sorry, main server. Go to this USR local Nagios. Okay. So if you go to this lib exe. So we have seen in the configuration file, right? check nrp check ping check oracle check uptime so that will execute from here check time check tcp particular port number check ssh okay this is completely plugin basically in the for the nagios and if you come back and go to this etc configuration okay you will see this cgi file here let me do cat this is for the Nagios configuration. The one thing I want to show here that I forgot, I guess. Let me open. One minute. Huh? That alert wall apart. I want to show you that. Okay, objects contacts dot CFG. It is C objects contacts this one. Okay, here you can add your email address. Let's say you want email alerts from the Nagio, so you can just add the email alerts here. Your email address basically. If you want to add more email address, you can just copy this block. Okay, and just paste paste below this and you can add the number of people email address there one by one. You can just simply copy this line here and you can just only rename the this email address. So let's say you might have a multiple team members, right? Your tech lead, your manager or something. If they want alerts, you can just add their email address as well. And here contact name, let's say. Oh, let me show you one thing here. Like, I mean, how you can do this set number let me copy this area okay and i will come to this bottom of this line and here okay let me paste so what how you can do this
So for example, you can add your mail address here like Ganesh at Nagel.com or example.com or whatever. OK, and you can add here. Name. OK, for example, whatever the surname there. OK, like this and after that you have to you need to copy this contact name like let's say ganesh abc come to this bottom group name okay here member you can just give the comma here and paste that contact group name contact name, contact name this one okay and similar way if you want to add for any other users rohit ben or something so you, you can just copy this block here completely and paste here and just change the email address and contact name and that contact name should be here by giving the comma okay like this and give the name like this but for that you have to give, copy paste this block here and you have to change your email address and name here okay same contact name should be here then what will happen nagos will treat as a contact group name as an admin so where we have passed this admin let me show you i am going to, i am not going to save this file okay let's say this is the inside the servers we have this linux linux server right so here we can pass the notification here i have not added but let me check the windows one okay inside this notification you need to pass that notification let me go to this top Okay, off the screen, I will show you that option. Okay, uh, is there are any questions? So I need to open that configuration file. Or oh, let me quickly show you here. Right? No issues. Enable admin notifications in Nagios config. Okay, for host. Just one parameter. I just I'm just not remembering, but that we need to pass here. This is the configuration which we have look. OK. Email address and your contact name. Now coming, I'm coming to this Linux host configuration. Here we need to pass that. Notification enabled, OK? That means your notification will be working. This is not what I'm expecting. Let me refresh it. See, now this time he has given the proper uh, notification system. So in the define service, which we are defining here, right? Let's say we are using this define service generic. So here on the bottom that we need to pass like this notification enabled 
Okay, then give the contact group name. Which we are defining in there. In the. Contacts. This one contact group name, okay. Just one minute. Huh? Okay, any other doubts before wrap up? Because there are lots of stuffs in the NAG US if you look at that. So everywhere in the organization, some company might use NAG US, some might use Grafana, Prometheus like that. Okay, at least if you learn NAG, uh, definitely you will have to knowledge on the CloudWatch. Okay, because some people might not go on the third party tool. They, they will use CloudWatch as a monitoring tool, which we uh, last time covered. Then the Nagios and Grafana as well. At least little bit uh, knowledge like installation part and the addition, the dashboards that log data source configuration. So in the Grafana, we will look uh, see that that uh, how we can add the data source and the dashboards. Okay. 